From thriving on the thrill of the hunt to the one planet that the Preds wouldn't dare to set foot on, the Predators would never dare hunt xenomorphs on this alien planet. Here's why. Starting off, did you know that hunting xenomorphs is more than just a sport for the Predators? It's actually deeply rooted in their culture like literally woven into the fabric of the Predator society. So much so that it's an integral part of their coming-of-age ceremony. Known as the Blooding Ritual, this ceremony demands that young Yaochia warriors try to take down a xenomorph, or even wipe out a small hive of these deadly creatures to prove themselves as mature clan members. And to complete the ritual, they go a step further. They brand themselves with the mark of their clan, using the acidic blood of their fallen xenomorph prey. Talk about a rite of passage. And this has been featured in a bunch of AVP stories, including the 2004 film. It's essentially the foundation for all those intense conflicts between the Predators and Xenomorphs. Interestingly, unlike other Predator hunts, the blooding ritual is typically carried out in a controlled environment, a planet that's unfamiliar to the Xenomorphs but familiar to the Predators themselves. You might be wondering why they take this approach. Well, one reason could be that inexperienced Yaocha warriors are usually the ones going on these hunts. It's a way for them to gain practical experience while minimizing the risks. But there's another compelling possibility too. The Xenomorph homeworld may be a strict no-go zone. While it's not explicitly stated in any comic, movie, or novel, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Think about it. If the Predators attempted to hunt Xenomorphs on their own turf, the outcome wouldn't be pretty. It's a situation where the Yaocha would either die or be pushed into doing something they really, really don't want to do. If we're serious about sorting this out, we need to understand the rich and captivating culture of the Predators first. These extraterrestrial hunters have a history as fascinating as their intimidating appearance. So, grab your plasma caster and let's explore their world. First things first, the Predators have a long and storied history that spans across the cosmos. These badass extraterrestrial hunters have been cruising through the galaxy for ages, honing their skills as the ultimate predators. Their social structure is all about honor, strength, and bagging their prey. It's like a whole code of conduct where the toughest and most skilled predators score major respect and rank. But it's not just about flexing their muscles. These hunters have a whole set of values that drive their actions. They live for the thrill of the hunt, playing fair, and showing respect to their targets. And hunting ain't just survival to them, it's a freaking sacred tradition that defines who they are. Now, let's dig into their sick hunting practices and rituals, cause that's what makes them who they are. These guys have some next level techniques and badass gear to keep them at the top of the food chain. We're talking wrist blades, shoulder mounted plasma casters, and even cloaking devices that make them invisible. Combine that with their insane physical abilities, and you've got some seriously formidable opponents. But what really sets the Predators apart is their deep-seated love for rituals, because that is how they show off their skills, represent their connection to their clan, and pay homage to their heritage. It's like a whole spiritual experience wrapped up in a hunt. So how the heck did hunting xenomorphs become such a freaking big deal in Predator culture? Like, did you know that the Preds are also key players in their breeding game? That's right. At first, back in the original 1979 film, Alien, everyone believed those xenomorphs were stuck on one planet only, LV-426, also known as Acheron. They only hitched rides on human spaceships a couple of times, but guess what? Those xenomorphs never lasted very long. Even the xenomorph clones in Alien Resurrection couldn't break free from their birthplace on the ship. So how the heck did these slimy creatures spread across the whole darn universe then? In the comic book sequels, humans are jet-setting to all sorts of distant worlds. And guess what they find more often than not? Freaking xenomorph hives already set up and running. And originally, folks thought those xenomorphs were hopping from planet to planet thanks to that space jockey dude from the first film. But there's a comic that drops a bombshell with a way juicier explanation. In Aliens vs. Predator, War by Randy Stradley and Mike Manley, Machiko Noguchi, a human badass, gets recruited by the Yaucha after she went on a xenomorph-killing spree in the original AVP comic series. She even earned mad respect and honor from the Predators. But here's the crazy part. Machiko pretty much unknowingly stumbled into the blooding ritual and BAM! She ended up becoming in a full-blown Predator herself. See, hunting xenomorphs is like their freaking religion. But there's more to it than just killing these freaky aliens. 
Because the Yaocha also got to make sure enough xenomorphs are spread across the universe for them to keep the hunt alive. So, in this comic, Machiko and her squad of predators go to an alien planet on a mission to nab a xenomorph queen and move her to a new world, since they want to create a fresh hunting ground for the predators. So the Xenomorph's cosmic conquest is basically just a covert operation by the Predators, done to guarantee that there are just enough of these living nightmares in all corners of the universe. Plus, it's a way for them to keep the Predator legacy going strong. Talk about a wild family tradition. The connection between Predators and Xenomorphs goes way deeper than you'd expect. Sure, they fight epic battles against these alien nightmares, but they don't just get dumped on some random planet and left to fend for themselves. Nah, during that ritual, those young predators get some serious guidance from the OGs, the seasoned pros. They show them the ropes, teach them the tricks of the trade, and make sure they survive and thrive in the midst of all that xenomorph chaos. It's like a passing of the torch. Think of it like a mentorship program for badass hunters. But when push comes to shove, it's all on them. The success or failure of the hunt rests solely on their shoulders. And the hunt ain't limited to one measly planet or boring environment, too. These hunters thrive on diversity, and the blooding ritual can go down anywhere, in any hostile terrain. They're all about showing off their adaptability and resourcefulness, no matter the circumstances. But there's a flip side to it, too. If they fail in the blooding ritual, it's a one-way ticket to Shametown and the risk of getting kicked out of the clan. Yeah, this ritual ain't no joke. It's a make-it-or-break-it moment with serious consequences. And this time-honored tradition keeps the predator culture thriving, making sure only the baddest, most skilled individuals get the nod to join their prestigious clan. But hold up, there's still one planet they'd never dare to set foot on, Xenomorph Prime. This bad boy was introduced in the Dark Horse Comics Aliens, genocide miniseries, cooked up by Mike Richardson, John Arcudi, and Damon Willis. It's the homeland of these creepy aliens, ruled by the top dog, the Queen Mother. When the Colonial Marines made their grand entrance on this planet, they were straight up swarmed by thousands upon thousands of xenomorphs. Thank goodness they came prepared with anti-xenomorph gear like suits and energy shields. But let me tell you, a small pack of predators wouldn't stand a chance in this madness. Uh, unless they went all out. So, let's compare what we've seen in this series with other alien versus predator stories. The only predators who would even think about stepping foot on this crazy planet are the ones trying to prove themselves to their clan. But here's the kicker. They'd be green, outnumbered, and totally clueless against a swarm of thousands of xenomorphs. It'd be a total massacre. But it's not like the predator species can't totally wipe out the entire xenomorph homeworld if they felt like it, though. Like they got the firepower and skills to pull it off. But guess what? It's a move they would never ever make, and the real reason why is that getting rid of the homeworld would sow the seeds for a potential extinction event. As I mentioned earlier, those badass predators are responsible for spreading xenomorph life all over the galaxy. The last thing they'll ever do is mess with the source of their ultimate hunting tradition. It's like their holy grail, their bread and butter. So why would they want to destroy it? Doesn't make sense, right? They got no business going to Xenomorph Prime just to wreck it, even though they totally have the power to do so. So bottom line, predators ain't touching Xenomorph Prime. That place would chew them up and spit them out faster than you can say alien invasion. Their blooding ritual might be hardcore, but even they know when to steer clear of a Xenomorph bloodbath. Gotta respect the predators for keeping it real, even if they could go full on beast mode if they wanted to. Aliens got the receipts to prove it. So there you have it. From the one planet that the Preds wouldn't dare to set foot on, to them thriving on the thrill of the hunt. That was why they would never hunt xenomorphs on this alien planet.